Hi everyone, it's Aga from EurekaCrystalBeads.com with another fun beading video for you. Before I get started, quick reminder to check out the rest of our channel and the, the rest of the tutorials. And if you like what you see, if you've learned anything, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you always know when we're posting new content. In the last video, I showed you how to embroider with beads on base material. I showed you how to embroider straight lines in three different ways and how to fill a space with the chaotic stitch. In this video, I'm going to show you how to finish a piece, which means how to cut off the excess base material, how to finish the edges, and what to do with the back. Stay with me, and I will show you how to do all of this. First, let me tell you what materials you're going to need to finish your bit embroidered piece. You're going to need backing material, and um, in this respect I recommend Ultra Suede. It's durable, it's nice to the skin, it's soft, and you have many colours to choose from, so I recommend that. You're also going to need glue to um, stick your backing material to the back of your design. Um, I don't recommend the quick drying glues, the super glues. Try using ones in metal tubes, for example. Uh, they're usually on the thicker side. You are also going to need beads to uh, finish the edges of your work neatly. I recommend uh, using a size 11 beads and that's what I'm going to be using here. You're also going to need thread and needle, obviously. I'm going to use a uh, golden thread so that, so that you can see how it looks and so that it matches the colour of my beads. Okay, oh, you're also going to need some scissors to cut your design off from the excess of base material. Let's start by cutting our design, uh, cutting the excess base material from our design. What I like to do is I like to uh, start looking from the backside, so to say, and cut it, cut it roughly at first so that I make sure not to cut any thread off, because that could be a problem. Another thing you can do if you have a glue that dries in an elastic form and not in a very stiff form, you can put some glue, a thin layer of glue, over the thread in here so that you make sure that even if you cut the thread, uh, there's still glue that holds it all together. I'm doing that because I'm a risky person, why not? So I'm just cutting them, uh, cutting the, the excess base material off. As you can see, it's pretty rough at this point. But I just cut off a little more. Rounding the edges over here. I need to be careful because as you can see I started over here. So I just need to go close to it so that the base material doesn't show. But I also need to be careful not to cut this thread. Okay, I think that's enough. What I'm going to do, uh, what I could do, is I could colour the uh, edges, and if you don't want to risk cutting too close to the thread, you can leave a little bit more space over here. And in this case, you can colour the edge to match the colour of the beads that you have in here so that it doesn't show so much from under the beads. I'm not going to do this because this is quite neat and tight. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut off a sufficient amount of backing. Just like that. And I'm going to use some glue on the back of my work 
it's a small work so I don't need to make it any more stiff but if you're making something larger you're going to ne need to make it more stiff because it's gonna be a little bit wiggly and I like my works on the stiff side so uh, I typically use pieces of uh, hard paper, hard carton not cardboard typically because it bends easily along the lines that are inside so I prefer using just stiff paper and it works pretty nicely. Some glues also provide this effect of making it a little bit more stiff but if you're just starting you can also not make it any stiffer, not, not provide anything in between the layers and you just distribute the glue evenly like that and put the backing on all right ideally you should wait until the glue is absolutely dry and it can take a bit of time so now we're going to cut backing along the lines and this step I already I don't need to flip my uh, design for. I start roughly just like before and I'm going to get into details later. Now I can cut it a little bit closer to the edge. Just make sure not to cut it uh, too much so that it doesn't hide beneath uh, the base material when you look from the front. This is absolutely okay. Maybe just a little bit more. Let's just check if the lines are pretty much straight. Let me just clean up a little bit. Now let me show you two ways of making nice and neat edges for your bead embroidery design with beads. I'm going to finish this one with size 11 Toho beads in the shade Galvanized Starlight. Now when I'm making small designs like this, I try to use enough thread to be able to finish the whole piece, but, and again, like I showed you in the previous video, I typically use a lighter and some flame instead of making a knot because in this way I'm sure it won't untie. So as I said, if you're making larger pieces you're probably gonna need more than one piece of thread so you don't have to make it extremely long, but I like to finish with one piece of thread. Uh, now I'm going to show you two ways, as I've said. I'm going to make the top in one way and the sides in the second way. And then I'm going to show you how to um, make a little bit of bale out of beads, a loop through which you will be able to uh, put a chain or a piece of a string to hang your pendant. So I'm going to start somewhere in the middle of this side. Uh, I start by inserting my needle. Uh, in between the layers so that it comes out right here 
right underneath the beads through the base material. Like this. Okay, and I start with taking two beads, then I'm going to be adding only one, but if you're starting, you're gonna you're going to need two. Uh and now I insert my needle roughly two beads away from where I started, from the back to the front, coming out like before, just underneath the beads. Now that's what it looks like. And you're going to want to uh, go up through the second bead that you added, putting your needle through it from the side that goes down, like, like this. This is what you end up with for now. Then you take one bead, you insert your needle roughly one bead away from the last place you insert your you insert your needle in. And again, you put your needle through that bead in the upwards direction and you can pretty much see where it's going. Another bead. You put it through the backing in the base material. And then up. And that's that's how it looks. It's going to be this nice little wall of beads. It's pretty simple and easy. Now I've reached the uh, side of my to be pendant and I'm going to switch to another stitch that you can use to finish your edges. I'm going to add one bead and just imagine that you just started to finish your piece and this is the first bead you add. So what, what we are going to do now is to go through this bead exactly from the opposite side to what we've been doing this far. Let me show you. Adding one bead. Inserting my needle through the backing and the base material. Roughly one bead away. And I'm not inserting my needle through the bead from this side, like in this stitch, but from this side. So in the direction in which I'm going, let me show you again another bead. Roughly one bead away. And I'm going through from this side. I'm trying to choose the more even beads. I like to use this stitch for brooches and pendants with which I'm going to use uh, metal bales because this stitch is very neat, it looks nice, but this one is better when it comes to adding elements because you can add elements by going through the beads like this like you can just add a loop of beads in here uh, using these beads 
and in here it wouldn't be possible so easily. But it's very nice looking. Again, one bead. Try to go as close to the beads you've embroidered as possible. Because in this way, not as much of the base material is going to show. In in this stitch, barely any is showing. So you, you basically don't see it. In this you see a little bit more. But it's it's very nice anyway. I'm going to continue uh, through this side and this side, and then I'm gonna go back a full circle to this side and show you how to connect the end to the beginning of the row. I've reached uh, the end of the row, made a full circle, and this is the first bead that I added, the first of the two that I added. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat it as if the, this was another bead. I'm going to go through it from the side on which it is connected with the next bead. So like this. And now I'm going to go through right what I want it and go through and go through that bead so that it stands straight like that and what I do to reinforce it is to typically just go down the next bead and then finish but what I'm going to show you next is how to make simple loop from beads to hang your pendant on. Ideally you would need two central beads, in my case that's how it looks from the front by the way, the edges That's how it looks from the back. I really like the aesthetic. So nice and even. So in my case, it's one central bead. It's more difficult, but I'm going to show you how to uh, deal with it. So you're gonna need two beads. And you just go through the same bead with it with them like this and you try to go to the other side and through that same bead again and go through one of the beads that you added now you take two more beads and you add them like this on top of the last two beads and you go up through these two beads on one side you add two more beads again i'm trying to choose more even ones you go through one last bead on the side, basically create a ladder, it's called herringbone stitch, and it creates a ladder of beads. You now go through the last two beads on this side, up, and you add two more beads, again. Go through one on this side, in through two 
from the opposite side. And you basically do this until you've re reached the length that you need to make the loop. This is going to be around twice this much. Now I have made a chain sufficient to make a loop like this. So I'm at a point where my thread comes from the end of the last bead. Now what I'm going to do now is go through the central bead down through it. I'm going to try to put my needle through the backing and the base material. So that I can go back right through the very same bead. So I go back up through this central bead here and I go through that last bead that I added that still doesn't have any attachments to the central bead and back down through the bead on the opposite side and through that central bead again. There. So that's what you end up with. It's a nice, nice little loop for a chain or a piece of cord. Now, how do I finish a thread in this situation. I usually do a trick. I go in between the beads that I embroidered on the uh, on top of the design on the edge and I actually go through as much as I can of the edge row and on the way I make a little knot by uh, getting my needle under the thread that's that goes through the beads in this row. I make a little loop and I go through that loop and that's how you have a little knot in between beads and then I just go through the beads in the row again and if you go through all of them, they're also going to be lined up more evenly. There, okay. Now I can cut off my thread as close to the bead as I can. And that's it. That's how you do bead embroidery. It's easy, right? What is it, like four stitches that you need to remember or just turn on this tutorial and follow it? So you've learned how to finish a piece, what to finish it with, and what are the stitches that you can use on the edges of your work. Like this or like this. Now all of the materials that I have shown uh, today, uh, the beads, uh, ultra suede, the needles, the threads, the glues, everything you need you can find uh, at eurekacrystalbeads.com. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Keep being creative and see you next time. Bye!